Well, today I'm going to start on a project I've been putting off for a little bit now. And then when I decided to do it, the weather turned cold again and it started raining and the weather got all nasty and I just had to get putting it off and putting it off. But I think I finally found a few days here where I can get it done. This is going to be a multi-day project, but I'm going to take all of the coach lights down off the house. There is four of them. Should be five. I'll explain that later. But I'm going to take these down, clean them up, and repaint them, and put them back up. And there's the one on the front porch. That's the best looking one of the bunch. Well, technically not. And then we have this one. You can see the paint's fading off of it real bad in spots. And then we'll come across to the other side. Like somebody's already painting in the neighborhood. You can tell this one is really sun faded here. And then we got this one back here, which we never use. It's just there. So, here's what's going to happen. I am going to take this one, which used to be at our back door. I took it down and put a spotlight back there when we first moved in years and years ago. So we're going to take this one down, or take this one. You see I've already started taping it up. I'm going to tape up. I'm not going to take them apart. A neighbor that used to live next door took his apart years ago and and never got them back together. Ended up having to replace them with different lights. Um, he said don't ever take them apart. So I'm just going to tape up all the glass and then spray paint them the way they are. So I'm going to do this one first so that I don't have exposed wires hanging outside the house. I'm going to do this one first. And then I'm going to take this one down at the side of the house and put the first one I do up there. And then take that one and the one from the front porch, if you can call this a porch, from the front door and paint those. That way this one will be the only one with exposed wires for a day or two while the paint, you know, while I'm cleaning, painting, and doing all that stuff. And uh, and it's covered so it shouldn't get water or any rain on it. We rarely use this one anyways either. And then when those two are done, we will uh, come out here and take that one down and the one on the other side and put the two that I just painted up and then I'll take one of these ones down off the front of the garage and paint up and put back up at the front of the house or at the front house at the front door how's that sound is that over complicating things I just don't want exposed wires hanging outside I need to coach lights on at night for security so don't really want to do without that. So just let you know that's what I'm up to. We will uh, pick the video back up while I'm doing some other things. All right, let me show you what my plan is here. My plan is to tape up all the glass on these. I hope you can hear me. It is extremely noisy out here in the garage. Um, the daycare that's being ran out of somebody's house has decided to let the kids out and play right now and just everybody is out right now doing things cars everywhere all right so I'm just going to try to take this up that down in there get that down in the creases of my fingernail as best as I can and I'm gonna take an exacto and trim off well I 
just got way off the line on that one. I'm going to have to redo that one. Yep, I have to go over that one again with a little piece of tape. I just can't get that piece to cut right. Well, that's pretty much what I'm going to do for the whole thing. much better on that side so you see what my gist is here and then I'll paint the whole thing so I'm not gonna make you watch all that we'll uh, we'll just cut I'll come back when we're done well 45 minutes later and this is what I ended up with Got all sides taped up Pretty close I think there's paints gonna get through in some spots but uh, yeah I'm not looking for perfection here I'm just looking to get it done and make it look better than what it did from a distance nobody's gonna be up so close to it like this looking at it anyways but uh, now I just gotta set me up a paint station here I don't know how I'm gonna do that Oops, sorry for that and uh, figure out where I'm gonna do that at and find a time when it's not so windy that I can actually do it. I'm thinking about going out and there's a pretty much dead tree out behind our backyard in the woods. Think about going out there and drilling a two by four into it and then drilling these using the mounting holes, putting decking screws or I mean just drywall screws through there and mounting them up vertically like that on it and then I could uh, pretty much get all the way around it and spray paint it kind of blasted this one with some black paint before just to see what it looked like and decided I kind of liked it so I think that's what we're gonna go with if I hadn't mentioned that before I'm gonna do these in uh, some Hammered metallic black, I believe, is what it is. But uh, stage one done. Now I got to clean it and paint it. Probably do that early in the morning. Give it all day to dry. Till then. Well, we've had a little change of plans. I had planned on painting this out behind the fence in the woods, nailed to the side of a tree. I got thinking, well, if I nailed it up against the back of a tree, I'd have a hard time getting to the back side here. So I just laid it here on a TV tray with a piece of cardboard. And it's also wasn't supposed to be windy today, but it is. But uh, this is the first coat. I have missed a few spots tucked back up in the corners, which is probably the reason you probably should take these apart. But I really didn't want to mess with that. Whole disassembling, reassembling four of these. But uh, this is a, I got the paint over here. This is the paint I'm using. I'm using a Rust-Oleum hammered black. I believe it is, it says hammered. I guess it's a glossy, semi-glossy color. But that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. That's the color I picked. And if I haven't mentioned, I guess I can mention it now. The reason I'm doing this, instead of just buying new, there's nothing really wrong with these. Um, 
they're just they were just faded and to replace these are expensive a light like this is at this quality of one is probably in the 100 150 range you can get cheaper ones but they're smaller or they're junk neighbors will put cheaper ones up and they've already broken <laughs> and uh so you know we don't mind the looks of them we just you know they were fading and we never really liked to color them anyways but that is the reason we are painting them instead of just replacing them but uh yeah the wind is something fierce out here so i don't know when i'll get back to filming more of it i'll probably just uh get back to when i'm completely done with everything and show you it then and here we are this is gonna be the first light that we change out it's over beside the garage and you can tell it is in pretty bad shape so let's see what it looks like after we get it replaced i'm not going to show you the whole wiring process and everything that's not what this video is about but i will tell you i'll bring you back here real quick and uh show you I am going to try to use these Wagos, Wagos, whatever they call them, to rewire it. Because, you know, we don't know how much longer we're going to have these lights up. We might change our mind and put new lights up soon. But I'll get back to you after we get this new light, or <laughs> restored light, put back uh, up. There we go. This is the finished product. Yeah, some might notice that paint the insides in the back there so it'll still be brown but unless you're standing this close you really can't tell I mean even back from here you really can't tell too much but uh, yeah that's the finished product had a little bit of issues with the nuts trying to put it back on here don't want to go all the way in I'll come back out and work on that later but right now I found another issue I gotta go do with so off to do with that one eternity later. We have gotten all the lights done now. This is the one at the front porch. Which would have been one of the ones that are originally on the front of the house. <laughs> Come around here. And we got this one. Which is not really up there all that well. This one, and then I think I've already actually shown this one back here. These are supposed to be hammered metal finishes, and none of them really came out to look that hammered metal. But they look okay. Now, on a side note for all this, is uh, only the light on the left side of the garage down there was the uh, left side, right side of the garage. I guess as you're looking at it, the right side, if you're looking out, be the left. That was the only light that was wired up properly. I mean, the wires were actually twisted together properly. And uh, yeah, all the rest of them, the wire nets were just twisted on there and they were barely making contact. I'm surprised any of them actually worked. They just, they fell off. They were, they were really, really badly done. But to make this whole process easier, I got these little Wigo, Wago, whatever they're called little things here. I got the three ones. I only needed the one outlet or the one light fixture only needed the three ones, but I didn't see a sense of buying two boxes, one with the twos and ones with the threes. I just bought a box of the threes. It works. But pretty nifty. You just pull back the tab trim the wire up a little bit gives you a little gauge right on the side to tell you how to trim up the wire stick the wire in there and snap it down these things 
made it so much easier to put the fixtures back up. Oh God, it was night and day. Holding those things up there and trying to twist a wire nut on them would have been a nightmare. But uh, yeah, I basically opened the little tabs up on these things and just had them already on the light fixture and just held the light fixture up there and stuck the wire in. Did it pretty much with one hand. It was that easy. But uh, we'll wrap this project up. Um, just uh, saved me about uh, probably 400 to $500. Cost me $20 in paint and tape. You know, it would have cost $100 plus or more per fixture to re just replace them. I think that's a pretty good deal. And I replaced them with these Wagos just in case, you know, the paint job does fail or whatever after a year or so and we decide to upgrade them. It's going to be a lot easier to pull these little tabs and to undo the mess that was in there. But, uh, yep, we're going to end it there.